Welcome back to Innovation 2022. Please welcome Intel's Chief Technology Officer, Greg Lavender. So glad to be here. As CTO, I represent really tens of thousands of engineers who are productively working across the company every day, 19,000 of which are software engineers, which often surprises people. We're going to talk a lot about software, but also about the hardware and how the hardware and the software play together well to deliver the value that we can bring to the market across our entire portfolio. So um, as we go forward, I understand the constraints faced by developers, whether it's related to performance, productivity, portability, and particularly quality. As everybody knows in the company by now, I'm a real stickler for quality, and we're not going to ship second-rate products. We're going to ship first-rate leading-edge projects products. So my job at Intel, my team and I are working hard to remove all the barriers that impede your ability as developers to maximize your productivity on our platforms. A global development survey recently conducted by the Evans Data Group in late 2021 revealed that 90% of the 25 million estimated developers globally are using software developed and or optimized by Intel, and only a fraction of them actually know it. We've done such a good job about being quiet about all the software innovations that we provide, not just at the firmware, the BIOS, the foundational layer of our software stack, but across the whole open source ecosystem uh, that we've seeded all the optimization code across all major technologies, uh, including working with our ISV commercial partners to make sure everything runs extremely well on our whole family of processors, CPUs, GPUs, uh, even our FPGAs. So Intel has always been this corporate contributor to the Linux kernel. And as I said, as Linus once said, that is what makes Linux so good, is that you put something in and that effort multiplies and the value that we all get out of it is really a positive feedback cycle. So this sort of think of openness as kind of a sort of nutrition. It's a basic nutrition of fosters collaborative engineering and co-innovation, unleashing creativity and creative solutions that can be shared by everyone. So TensorFlow 2.9 was released in May of this year. And this is an important release because Intel had put its one API, one DNN, that's our deep, deep neural network technology, into those ecosystems, into TensorFlow in particular. And so now when you just download it, and there have been over 10 million downloads of that version, it just automatically accelerates and works on Intel processors, including the ones we haven't yet released, but we'll have available in our Intel Developer Cloud. And we're also working with Google as a founding member and contributor to the OpenXLA project. If you haven't heard about it, I recommend you go look it up. It's going to be really fundamentally, fundamentally transformational in the way that we make sure that when you write your AIML code, you can compile it and run it everywhere and not be sort of restricted to a particular kind of device. Please welcome my former Sun Microsystems colleague, industry Illuminati, James Gosling, who will be joining us remotely. Well, so, so, so um, you know, one of the, the, the sort of folk principles at Sun years and years ago was that it doesn't matter how many employees you have, um, there are always smarter people outside your company. It's both innovation and it's also understanding your customer's needs. Um, a lot of times people, you know, at, a, at an engineering organization like, like Amazon where I am or at Intel, you know, you have your own kind of mental view of what customers need. And, and you try to make that as close to what real customers need, but it's never quite right. But if you actually get customers involved in the process, then, then suddenly, you find that you really do meet customer needs and you know the customers can say no this is this is not right that this would be better that way and you can do it or the customer can do it and they can submit it and submit a pull request and um, you know the the whole process accelerates and gets smoother gets deeper and it just works better for everybody. I want to talk a little bit more about this idea of open accelerated computing and what does it mean and both why it is and why it's important because I think this is really important for the industry and I think Intel again we want to take a leadership in promoting open source technology, open standards and open process so that the whole industry benefits and then we'll compete with everybody at the hardware level but let's not penalize people at the software level. We need an enriched powerful software ecosystem that everybody can use seamlessly and as I said a minute ago 
90% of developers today are using Intel accelerated technology. They don't even know it, and that's the way it should be. So in some ways, we are lifting a page from James's playbook for Java. That's what inspired me to kind of have come, him come and talk to us, where the, where the big breakthrough was enabling developers to write once, run anywhere, without having to change that low-level code. How do we foster this new open way of programming uh, hardware accelerators that create open accelerated computing? So I looked around the industry, talked to a lot of people, and I, I discovered there's this brilliant set of 85 plus engineers based in Edinburgh, Scotland, and a company called Codeplay, which you've probably never heard of. And this company, led by the CEO, Andrew, uh, has been doing this for about 20 years, mostly in the HPC community, because the high performance computing community is a big, are big supporters of, of uh, open source and just getting the job done on high performance computing, and they've been our customers for many decades. And so um, we acquired Codeplay, but we did something very unique. We kept them separate as an independent managed sub subsidiary. So beginning this December, we'll start shipping 2023 versions of Intel's One API toolkits. It's a collection of 42 different tools. These toolkits fully support the Intel fourth generation scalable Xeon processors, codenamed Sapphire Rapids, and as well as our data center and Arc GPUs and Agilex FPGAs. It's already there. We'll start shipping those in January. Um, we, already, I'm sorry, we already have the support today, but we'll be shipping the 2023 versions of what we have. The 2022.3, the third quarter release, will be available shortly, which incorporates updates to all of our other 2022 toolkits in that release. So you can start developing today with one API toolkits, download them for free, access them via your favorite repository. And then if we go to the next layer is where things get interesting. It's that whole open source ecosystem I've been talking about. It's like, you know, like Java, like Python. Uh, I mentioned PyTorch, TensorFlow, OpenVINO. There's just tremendous thousands, thousands of systems, software libraries, runtimes, Kafka, you know, MySQL, you name it. It's all there. We optimize all that code for you. And so I have a bunch of software developers. That we have a bunch of software developers in the company that just do this every day. And we work with key ISVs as well, which are, are, is not open source, to make sure that they leverage all those, all that advantages. And they consume a lot of open source too. It's in their products, you just don't know it. And so really this idea of building these sort of value layers, market enabling hardware, foundational software, the middleware stacks, languages, frameworks, and tools, you know, to kind of get to the next layer of market differentiating technology. Intel and Lidos are piloting the Project Amber attestation service with Intel SGX on Intel third generation Xeon platforms for future use in our mobile medical clinics. Our clinical staff performs medical exams and processes health information for our US military uh, veterans. So today, our joint efforts with Accenture, we are announcing the release of the third set of AI additional reference kits. This is the three additional sets of AI reference kits for the healthcare industry that will help clinicians review medical code classifications, identify imaging anomalies, and facilitate claims reviews. This, again, healthcare is a dominant area where this is happening. These kits expand the reference kits that we've already released in July for a broad range of use cases, and all these kits are available as an on-ramp onto AI, and it's all available for, for, open, for, 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 download, I'm sorry, for download from GitHub. So you can go there and check, and every month we'll be updating these kits. Red Hat and Intel have a long history of collaboration and building open ecosystems. Our goal is to make it easy to develop and deploy in open hybrid cloud architectures. And the Katana team working hand in hand with the Intel team using the fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, we're able to deliver 16x speed ups on distributed graph partitioning and 4.7x speed ups on distributed GNN training through the use of Intel AMX and BFloat 16 precision. It shows us the power of combining the next generation hardware and software together. Ultimately, through innovative collaboration, we're able to deliver deep insights on connected knowledge at lightning speed. And with it, we're revolutionizing the drug discovery and development process and saving lives. So what you see here is the landing place. It's the landing page. It's cloudintel.com. So that's the starting point. This is the typical activities for users to register, to get an account. And if we scroll down in this page, you'll see these different services that we are planning for Intel Developer Clouds. Some of it we will see in the de upcoming demos. It's very interesting stuff. For the beta trial, we're going to first focus on the 
early technology access. So the goal of these services is to provide early access to pre-release hardware, Intel hardware and software. It's primarily for developing and certification testing. Now keep in mind, there's no installation, there's no configuration, and there's no software download needed. You can start right away. Thanks, Harman. I really appreciate that. It's a major step in our evolution of uh, both software and hardware, bringing it to the developers, again, by developers, for developers, so you can take advantage and harness these future opportunities before they show up in a server or cloud vendor of your choice. And it gives you early access to Intel's latest hardware products for performance benchmarking. I'd like to demonstrate three profiling capabilities from this service and explain why they are important. The first is CPU flame graphs. Many of you may already be using these. They have become the staple for performance observability in the industry. And this visualization shows you the shape of the software that you're running. It answers questions big and small. The second capability is off CPU flame graphs, which we are going to include in a public product for the first time. This is the companion to CPU flame graphs as it shows performance when you are not on CPU, when it's the time blocked on I.O., locks the schedule and other events. The third capability is CPI flame graphs. That's another visualization I've created and we're now going to include in a public product for the first time. This takes CPU flame graphs and shows processor cycle performance, the cycles per instruction metric as a color spectrum, from instruction bound as red to stall cycle bound as blue. So this highlights developers' own code using these colors so that they can get down into the CPUs. And it leads to these actionable items when you know you have these types of hotspot. These flame graphs were generated on Sapphire Rapids on the Intel Developer Cloud and we'll be making them easy to use in an upcoming service. Um, the future will be here before we know it, and now's a great time to talk about quantum computing. There are several qubit technologies out there, but there's only one that's built on transistor technology, and that's the one Intel is focusing on. That's what we do. And our silicon spin qubit approach taps into Intel's deep know-how in how to develop transistor technologies and leverages our decades of experience in manufacturing transistors and as Pat says, exploiting every element on the periodic chart when we need to go there. So what I'm going to show you is something ultra, ultra cool, a glimpse into the future. You saw it here first. This is a 300 millimeter wafer from our research lab. Let me see if I can zone in the light here to give you a sense of what, you're going to, what you see. There's 10,000 quantum arrays on this 300 millimeter wafer. And one of the things uh, we're announcing today is our quantum SDK for quantum simulation so that you developers can download the quantum SDK and this account allows developers to program quantum algorithms using simulated qubits. The SDK consists of the Intel quantum compiler that's written in C++, so if you're a C++ programmer, when we talk about accelerated computing, you can, you can sort of simulate you know, what accelerated computing can look like. It's a standard LLVM based runtime with quantum extensions and we provide this uh, to running, you can run it on your laptop and these elements create a full stack quantum computer in simulation. And so I shared a lot of information today. Open accelerated computing is a key topic for us to drive developer productivity and time to value. The open source ecosystem, our partnerships with Lidos, OBV, Dell, Red Hat, Accenture, many others in confidence computing and AI everywhere. It's real, it's here today, you can use it. And uh, we look forward to you basically trying things out, join our Intel Developer Cloud prototype, or beta, beta system. And um, we're ready to be here as your partner and help you accelerate what you want to do.